what is this funny looking instrument anyway? Why do some people call it the soul of Middle Eastern music? And as a belly dancer, why should you be interested in it at all? Marhaba dancers, I am Jen Suya helping you to achieve your belly dance dreams with the technique and culture of belly dance. If you're new to the channel, subscribe and hit that notification bell to make sure that you get every one of our videos that we upload each Monday and sometimes on Thursdays too. This is drummer Bob's and my firstborn son, Dakota, our baby boy, who's now a big kid. Isn't that awesome that he's here on this video to show you what this thing is called an oud, as we say in American, la oud. Do us a taksim, a improvisation. When you're doing something like that, what mm -hmm. are you thinking about? I'm not really thinking about it. I've listened enough to the music where, and played around enough with just the instrument itself to where I know uh, what certain sounds are like when I put my fingers in certain places. Uh, and not just note-wise, but also um, in terms of the actual uh, riffs. By the point where I'm actually really just tuxing fluidly, a lot of the little riffs and stuff, uh, or just little movements in the music like like that's just um, something that my fingers know and that my ear knows so when I uh, think about playing the music uh, or think about where the melody is going in my head uh, I don't really have to translate that to my fingers which can really trip you up uh, so the key is really just to listening to a lot of music in a specific mock com and trying to recreate it it's not a, a natural or it's not a it's not a conscious decision of what to play it's more of uh, just doing whatever comes to you in the zone in the flow which but sounds kind of drugged out but <laughs> I know but that's the amazing thing is that you can actually get that sort of high when you are in the moment improvising right mm -hmm. Interestingly, since belly dancing is putting the music on your body, when you're dancing to something like that, that's the same thing you're doing is you're going into like because we played together a lot of a lot. I I recognize the riffs and the patterns that he goes into. And so I've kind of developed little combinations and danced to that too. Or what I'm thinking about is immersing myself completely in the sound, forgetting about everything else, not thinking about technique or moves, just thinking about the sound so that I can, with the dance, show that emotion that we feel in that sound. Can you see why it is sometimes actually often called the soul of Middle Eastern music? So this thing, can you turn it around and show us what it is? Mm -hmm. In the back of it, like, so you can see, I mean, when we actually, when we have done shows together, I have introduced this on stage because I'm usually the talker, which you guys no all surprise. Know. I know. No surprise there. See, you can tell he's my kid. Anyways, it looks like a pregnant guitar. And in fact, it is said that the guitar comes from this instrument. Um, also, if you're familiar with the Renaissance lute, supposedly the lute comes from this instrument, laoud lute, and this has, how many strings, Coda? 12. I thought, no. Count them on. This one goes to 11. <laughs> the numbers all go to 11. Look, right across the board. Oh. 11, oh, 11, and most of 11, and then Amps go up to 10. Exactly. Does that mean it's louder? Is it any louder? Well, it's one louder, isn't it? It's not 10. You see, most, most blokes, you're going to be playing at 10. You're on 10 here, all the way up, all the way up, yeah. all the way up. You're on 10 on your guitar. Where can you go from there? Where this has 12. 11. 11! 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. Where's the band? 
This oh. is the bam. It's a double <gasps> bam. Okay, usually these go to 11, sometimes 13, but they are like double strings, right? Yes. Tuned in unison. Yep. So now, if you're playing a song mm -hmm. that, you know, like Ya Mustafa or Anatolian Memories or Lama Bada or something, which actually has a form to it, yeah. do you feel the same way? No, absolutely not. How do you feel when you're playing a song like that? Uh, for me, it's just uh, going through A, B, C, D, you know, checking off what parts of the song have I done. <laughs> Trying yeah. to remember the arrangement. Yeah. Is it fun? Uh, it can be. Uh, it it really all depends on the musicians you're playing with. If you get a really good group together, and even if it's a bad group, uh, uh, you know people that you, you don't have to like them that you're playing with, as because nobody's really talking during, or at least they shouldn't be, uh, while they're playing. So at that point, it's just really about uh, if everybody vibes with each other. So you're communicating with your music. Yeah. So even if they're sort of like, maybe if they're jerks i hate to say it but i mean the, the, uh, there are people that we mm -hmm. just don't really like or they're not very nice or something but you could actually vibe with them while playing the music right okay what would a basic scale sound like on this instrument <laughs> So what scale is, is that like called something? Trick, yeah. trick question. Of course, it's called a makam, right? A makam is kind of like the scales in Middle Eastern music. In Western music, like a regular something you'd play on the piano would sound like what? And, and this other thing that you played, which is called, was that... Hijaz, Makam Hijaz, like the mm, name of the similar scale. Similar to it, but yeah. Okay, so place that and let's hear the drums. So does no. that like sound weird to you? Like for a lot of Westerners, that might sound like out of tune, right? Yep. Yeah, I'm because. Similar. But to us belly dancers, it sounds awesome and mysterious and fabulous to dance to because the the notes have different steps, right, than they would in Western music. Mm -hmm. Is that right? So something might be a little bit not not quite in tune, not a little bit flat or a little bit sharp, music speak, um, where to the Western ear it doesn't really sound in tune, right? Right. Okay, but what that does in Eastern music, Middle, e Middle Eastern music, to kind of lump it together, is it gives this massive range of emotion, which is what we belly dancers love to dance to. So the cool thing about this instrument um, is that it can be percussive in sound or it can be melodic. So percussive means like a drum or melodic means like the melody, the song. So can you like demonstrate a percussive sound, you know, like like when you're when you're jamming on Shoshkin or or playing something lovely mm -hmm. like Lama Bada? Um, so like for percussive sounds, I'd try to mute the strings a lot, but um, and you're still playing um, you know, notes, so it's not just making rhythmic sounds, but um, so it'd be like. And so I'm trying to get a lot more of the um, sort of the percussive clicking sounds of like the the string in the misrab, um, which I don't know if it sounds any good, but I just kind of do it. The misrab is this this thing that you play with mm -hmm. this like stick, right? What's it made of? Uh, well, this one's made of cow horn, um, but most of them are made of plastic nowadays. But. Okay. Okay. And now how about something melodic, like in a song?
are like really into what Dakota's saying and learning about this, um, smash the like button right now and leave a comment and let us know, like, would you like us to do videos on how to dance? <laughs> How to dance to something like that. Like how would you dance to a percussive oud or how would you dance to a melodic oud? So leave that comment right now. Okay. So having grown up in a family learning this, how is it that you learn to play oud? Uh, well, I was forced <laughs> exactly. to learn an instrument. Uh, I was six years old. I just started playing guitar uh, I really think for probably just only a few months. Uh, and Actually, he was like born being drawn to stringed instruments. When we were in Turkey, I remember uh, going into a music store. I remember my parents being like, hey, Koda, you want to learn the oud? And I was like, no. And they were like, well, Shaukat plays the oud. And I was like, okay, that sounds fun. <laughs> <laughs> then they got me this half-size oud. I remember they kind of knew and I kind of knew some of the basics from hanging out with people that we knew that played it. Oud musicians love to teach people how to play the oud because nobody ever wants to play this. Especially, <laughs> why don't people want to play the oud? I mean, it's like the soul of Middle Eastern music. It's fucking hard to play. Amazing how he picks up. Very nice. So, <laughs> what's a fret? Uh, so a fret is a, an interval on, um, on instruments such as the guitar or bass uh, that basically have uh, the notes set out for you. Press so the that's note. different from this. Show us on that, like like slide a note on there. So like you can't really do this on, on a guitar that has frets on it unless it's a fretless guitar. Whereas if you have frets, um, you don't have to really think about as much uh, and also using your ear as much uh, in terms of where exactly where to, you know, play an A at. For on an oud, you really have to. There's a lot of muscle memory in learning where your finger has to go to play a specific note on each uh, string. Like dancing, muscle memory. Where, yeah. where, where's that hip drop? You know, so that you're not going. Oh, I think it's here. Isn't it a tradition of learning the music by ear? Mm -hmm. Which I think traditionally belly dance is a visual learning by watching. It starts as, as a social dance. We've kind of turned it into a stage dance and a performance, but originally it was a dance done, as far as I know, by people, for people. So watching, you know, little kids watching bigger kids. So same thing. So you grew mm -hmm. up hearing a lot of this music? Uh, yeah, quite a bit of it, I'd say. <laughs> like that's all he heard. So so you learned in the traditional way uh, of listening and then your mom cracking the whip mm -hmm. on you. <laughs> I mean, that's what we have to do as moms, right? We yell at our kids. That's what we do. A, B, C, A, B, C. Yeah, that's not really, it's not really A, B, C. You did, you, he did love performing when he was little. He really liked it. I have a little note that says, thank you for letting me perform. Do you remember that? I don't Having been a child raised in a family of music and belly dance and performing, what could you offer to belly dancers about dancing to this instrument called the oud, whether it's recorded or live? Forget about what you're trying to do and just go for it. Like listen to the music and just uh, try to interpret what you hear on your body and not think about uh, trying to do specific moves. Uh, I think the whole culture behind it is all about um, improvisation. So improvise if, if that sounds fun. You do you, man. I don't care. You do you, you do you. You heard it from the Udi. What is your favorite memory of performing the Udi? 
uh, favorite memory as a uh, as a born diva uh, probably would have been to play uh, the Turkish festival in DC the first time that we played it because um, it was it was pretty epic uh, as far as you could see there was you know people like we felt like total rock stars yeah I'm <laughs> myself <laughs> it was really fun. Worst memory of performing? Probably the last time that we played Turkish Fest. <laughs> what happened there? Oh, it was just, there wasn't anybody there. And so, uh, and also I had been, it was the last, one of the last times I performed with my electric oud. I had this image in my head of what it was going to be like, how it was going to be a sea of people. And uh, so I spent days on working on the sound that I wanted for the electric oud, because it's a completely different instrument. On this oud, you have the whole sound box that uh, helps create the, um, the sound that you hear, whereas on electric oud, really all you're hearing is the sound of the strings, so it takes a lot of um, uh, effects and modifiers to make it sound any good, at least in my opinion. Uh, and so I spent a lot of time creating that, and we get up on stage and there's nobody there, so it's like, well, that sucks. <laughs> That's the worst when you play for an audience, like one or two people, it's really... It's really unnerving. I mean, that is character building as a performer when you get all psyched and you're there and you have to act like you're psyched even though it's like, oh my God, nobody's here. I worked so hard. That's ironic. Best and worst, the same gig, right? A big question that probably everybody's dying to know, which get asked a lot, is like, what was it like playing with your mom as a belly dancer? Because mo most people don't like mm -hmm. get what that is right so what was that like it was weird it's totally weird uh especially when uh your friends start telling you that they've got crushes on your mom yeah but when you were little that of course that's like when you got no, into I couldn't, college right uh, yeah, yeah but i couldn't i couldn't care about when i was little when i was little i just as long as people were looking at me i didn't it didn't matter so really uh it, it, now that i think about it uh you were kind of a an annoyance and that uh, people Isn't weren't looking at me. Isn't that what mothers are anyway? Yeah. Oh! Because you were taking the, the you were taking everybody's attention. But not on Turkish festival stage when you're playing that electric oud and That's just true. headbanging Because that was and more everything. awesome. Right. You guys vote. Dancer more awesome oud player. Of course. This is a biased Yeah, it is. But, audience. but... That's what I personally loved about it was getting you guys, you and your brother to be center stage because I think and what I've seen in a lot of belly dancers who are playing with live musicians is it's all about me. They're in front, the musicians are behind. And we very on, very early on in our performing, we said, that's, the, that's not what we're trying to show. So we changed our stage arrangement to be musicians and dancers. So we're all part of it. Now, sometimes, you know, obviously the dancer's moving around a lot, so your eye tends to go there. But it was really important to us that the music and the dance, it's all a package, a showcase together. We're a bunch of hippies. A bunch of hippies. West Virginia hippies playing Middle Eastern music. What is your favorite song to play on the oud? I'd say probably Anatolian Memories. My brother Loss and I always had a lot of fun uh, jamming on that at the beginning of the song. Or at least I thought we both had. I did. So I don't care if he didn't. I did. So <laughs> That, <clears throat> we had a really good time on that yeah. song. song rocks it's an awesome that's a traditional turkish song anatolia turkey um and we just had a really good time with it there it is <laughs> belly dancers something about the oud this amazing instrument that all, every single belly dancer should know and should be able to dance to if you like this video smash the like button share it with your friends leave a comment on should we make videos on how to dance to this instrument do you want to see an interview with dakota's brother lasa the bass player who started out playing the zills and the drum what to watch next of course the performances with dakota on the cool electric oud and all of us at turkish festival masalama we'll see you on the next